The second topic of esophageal pathology is the esophagitis caused by multiple factors including the reflex of the gastric pantain named reflex esophagitis or ingestion, the second ingestion of earthen food like alcohol, erotic, corrosive acid, alkaline, excessive hot fluid like tea, heavy smoking. The third, bacteremia and viremia with direct infection of esophageal wall, mucosa or contiguous structure. This occur in the herpes simplex virus and cytomegalovirus. Fourth, fungal infection in the immune compromised patient, candidiasis, mucormycosis, aspergillosis, or uh, may associate with the esophagitis. Systemic discomative skin disease, benfigoid, alfocaat, benfigoid. Uh, it's a primarily is a skin disease, but can be associated with esophageal disorder and inflammation. Graft versus host disease. This type of topics are discussed in the immune pathology when there is a reaction of the uh, uh, immune cell in the grafted uh, organ toward the uh, body of recipient, and this will result in the inflammatory process elsewhere in the body, including the esophagus. Radiation, cytotoxic therapy, and uremia all may associated with the esophagitis. We will concentrate on the very important topics in our lecture, which is named as GERD, gastroesophageal reflex disease, or what named as GERD, gastroesophageal reflex disease. When there's a reflex of the gastric content, is the common cause of esophagitis. Reflex of gastric content toward the lower end of esophagus. The underlying pathogenesis is the frequent and protracted gastric chews reflex due to the incompetence of lower esophageal sphincter and failure of other anti-reflex mechanism. That to say, there is a counterbalance between reflex and anti-reflex and so that this disorder will result in the return of the gastric content due to the defect in the diaphragm or in the cardioesophageal. So that when there is disorder in this uh, uh, balance will result in the uh, reflex of the gastric content to the lower end of uh, esophagus. Disorder is visual mortality. Gastric content remain longer in contact with the mucosa when the effect in the peristalsis movement of the esophagus so that a long period of time will uh, uh, pass with the contact of the esophageal content to the uh, of the gastric uh, uh, juice toward the mucosa of the esophagus that result in the inflammation later on ulceration and so on. Elevated acid peptic level of the regurgitated food and duodenal bile acid uh, and lysolestine. The clinical feature of the GERD or reflex esophagitis or gastroesophageal reflex disease, the predisposing factor including uh, diet, fat, chocolate, alcohol, smoking, all hiatal hernia as we said, there is a relation between reflex and the hiatal hernia. Pregnancy, certain drugs all be can be exposed to the reflex of the gastric content toward the lower end of esophagus result in the uh, gastroesophageal reflex disease. The consequence of this reflex, if the condition is occasional, there is no consequence. But if it is recurrent and persistence for a long time, the inflammation can be start in the esophageal mucosa and this infl inflammation may be followed by ulceration of the mucosa and the bleeding and fibrosis that result in the structure, barred esophagus and dysphagia, dysplasia and dysplasia. So that this, there's a long period for the time to pass between the primary or the, the primary uh, uh, onset of the reflex and the sequelae of the reflex which are appear as the metaplastic condition in the lower end of esophagus, what we named as the uh, BART esophagus. So, because of the reflex of the gastric content, the pathological finding depending on the cause and the duration and the severity. Kulamakan duration akthar, kulamakan severity aqua, kulamakan the underlying pathological finding will be more. So, the hyperemia, edema, and wall thickening. This is occur as the primary inflammatory process. Pseudomembrane can be seen, and necrosis and even ulceration of the mucosa may be associated with the severe condition. Later on, because the condition is the chronic, 
the fibrosis and structure may be fellow and candidial esophagitis may be associated with the gray white inflammatory pseudomembrane depending on the underlying cause if that can cause candidial esophagitis underlying fungal infection may be associated with the fungal hyphae and inflammatory cell forming a pseudomembrane like gray white pseudomembrane So depending on the cause, if the cause is viral esophagitis, there is intranuclear inclusion. In the reflex esophagitis, when there is reflex of the gastric pontine, as we said, there is a basal zone of hyperplasia with the presence of the intra epithelial eosinophil and polymorph neutrophil. This picture showing the an inflammatory process seen in the lower end of esophagus endoscopic. Uh, picture of the esophagus result from the reflex of the gastric content from the stomach to the lower end of esophagus there is an inflammation uh, as appear as hyperemic area scattered hyperemic area as result of the reflex of the gastric content this picture showing the pseudomembrane that are associated with the fungal uh, infection fungal uh, candidial esophagitis that when the scrubbing of this membrane we find uh, a high fee and inflammatory cell with the debris because of the as a sequelae of the chronic reflex of the gastric contain and development of the inflammatory process in the lower end of esophagus may end with the metaplastic of epithelial lining this is named as the part esophagus and is considered as the pre malignant lesion of esophagus condition it's part esophagus is a condition in which the gastric or intestinal type of the mucosa, that to say glandular tissue, line the distal end of esophagus above the lower esophageal sphincter. As you know, the lower esophagus is, uh, uh, is lined by the stratified squamous epithelium. Squamous epithelium undergo inflammatory process, inflammation, ulceration, and later on replacement of the uh, totipotent cell, the repotent and totipotent cells, basal cell. Uh, uh, replacing this type of the epithelium by another type that are more resistant for this uh, new condition that associated with the chronic reflex of the gastric content to the lower end of the vagus and so there is an uh, uh, glandular structure or glandular, uh, glandular mucosa metaplasia mean replacement of the new epithelium instead of the uh, 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 original epithelium in this example of metaplasia, the glandular structure, either intestinal or gastric, will replace the stratified squamous epithelium of the uh, esophagus. So, its name as glandular metaplasia. The name glandular is the metaplasia if it is in this Glandular metaplasia means the gland are replacing the uh, uh, esophageal stratified squamous epithelium. The previous epithelial lining is not meshed. Metaplasia means replacement of the previous sequamus by a new columnar or glandular. So it's a glandular metaplasia. بالعكس مما حصل في bronchial tree. In the bronchus, where the lining is columnar epithelium. With the smoking, the replacement of the columnar by sequamus, named as sequamus metaplasia in the bronchus, while in the esophagus, the metaplasia is glandular, glandular metaplasia. فدائما اسم الجلاند يسبق الميتابلازيا في حالة الاسوفيجاس بينما في حالة البرونكاس is the sequamus metaplasia. دائما الاستبدال الاستبدال يذكر الجديد. ما يذكر التشو القديم يذكر التشو الجديد أتستبدلون الذي هو أدنى بالذي هو خير سو so, أتستبدلون الذي هو أدنى بني إسرائيل من طلبوا الاستبدال there is a new tissue here the new tissue is glandular metaplasia فدائما يذكر الميتابلازيا والاستبدال يذكر النسيج الجديد ما يذكر النسيج القديم so this is mostly acquired and in adult 
but may be seen in the children and may be congenital and stress. Because of the chronic, uh, uh, as we uh, talk, because of the chronic reflex of the gastric content toward the lower end of the vagus, that results in the inflammation, ulceration, and ulceration of the squamous mucosa that are healed later on by re epithelialization and ingrowth of the pluripotential stem cell which differentiate into the gastric or intestinal epithelium that are the metablastic tissue. Metablastic tissue new tissue is the gastric uh, glandular or intestinal. This is an example for the ingrowth. Uh, that the current shift of the in the lecture can the lower uh, part of the vagus is white related to the uh, squamous lining where the gastric uh, lining is brown related to the uh, mucus secreting glandular structure but now we see there is any growth of the brown tissue in the lower end of the vagus hair and this are related to the uh, metablastic tissue replacing the initial uh, squamous uh, lining of the esophagus. هذه المتبقية من ال squamous lining of the lower end of esophagus. وهذا the growth of the metablastic tissue that are uh, glandular. whether it is intestinal or uh, uh, gastric. Endoscopic finding: we uh, see there is an irregular areas of the uh, brown or uh, red color in addition to the irregular white. Areas of the uh, squamous uh, lining. How the mixture between white will uh, brown or white will red related to the mixture of the squamous and glandular areas. مناطق فيها glandular مناطق فيها squamous because of there's a, a, a metablastic condition uh, seen in this area. Microscopical appearance showing the stratified squamous epithelium of the lower end of the vagus with the intense inflammation and ulceration. Well, ulceration means tenduation, lack of the epithelial lining. ما باقي epithelial lining اللي باقي سب epithelial mucosa. And there is a totipotential stem cell. موجودة stem cell في هذا المكان اللي هو basal area of the epithelium. This stem cell إذا تعرضت لفترة طويلة long period of time with inflammation, ulceration, and high gastric content. This uh, 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 totipotential stem cell will showing a metablastic condition. That to say, differentiated toward a new, more resistant epithelium. يعني epithelium جديد أكثر مقاومة لل new environment اللي هي الأسيديتي العالية. So that uh, uh, this cell may progress to develop glandular structure. مثل ما تشوفون هنا the glandular structure. That are developed in the adjacent to the squamous epithelium. So that this a metablasia, and some may glandular metablasia. It's a columnar metablasia rather than squamous. Squamous is the one that is the old one. The new one is glandular. So that this is a glandular metablasia, not a squamous metablasia. Regarding the clinical features of the Barrett esophagus, the clinical symptoms dysphagia, retrosternal pain, hematemesis, and malignant. Let me tell you in the lecture that there is a shared symptom, whatever the underlying pathology. So it can be simple, inflammatory, even the tumor. The symptom here is mutual. The symptom here is one: dysphagia, retrosternal pain, hematemesis, and malignant. Secondary complication including the Barth ulcer, structure, dysphagia, dysplasia. The uh, Barth ulcer, as we uh, seen, uh, there is an ulceration of the uh, epithelial lining, and because of the chronic inflammatory process, there is a chronic fibrosis in the wall that results in the structure and narrowing of the lumen. Dysplasia of metablastic uh, tissue. How did metablastic tissue, which is columnar glandular uh, tissue in the lower end of the vagus? Uh, if uh, if there is a persistent exposure to the traumatic environment, we may have the inflammatory process, the ulceration, repeated attack on trauma, may associate it or result finally with the dysplasia. That to say, inflammation followed by ulceration, followed by metablasia. Later on, metablastic tissue may show the dysplasia. With dysplasia here, it will be for the carcinoma in form of adenocarcinoma. الميتابلاستيك تيشو الجديدة هي جلندولار فمن الطبيعي أن تكون الملجنسي هو أدينو كارسون. That's occur in about ten percent of the patient. 
develop adenocarcinoma. Where the patient and those patients with the part esophagus about 30 to the 40 extra higher risk for the general population. Yeah, هنا احتمالية ورisk for the development of adenocarcinoma 40 ضعف عما يحصل في general population. 30 إلى 40 ضعف high risk for the general population for development of adenocarcinoma. And so the part esophagus is the only recognized precursor for the esophageal adenocarcinoma. المصدر الوحيد للأدينو كارسينوم هو البارت أسوفيجس ما في احتمالية أنه الأدينو كارسينوم تظهر من أي سبب آخر غير البارت أسوفيجس that are mean metablastic glandular structure replacing the lower end of أسوفيجس أسوفيجيال تيومر there are two types of أسوفيجيال تيومر benign tumors and malignant tumor البناين mostly are missing chimer and the leiomyoma is the most common and usually small asymptomatic and discover incidentally. Other are fibroma, lipoma, neurofibroma, hemangioma and lymphangioma. Any type of mesenchymal tumor benign can be seen in the esophagus. While the malignant tumor mostly are cancer that are represent about 4% of malignant tumor in the human esophageal cancer, malignancy, carcinoma. While the most of the benign are mesenchymal. More common the, regarding the malignant tumor are more common in the male, about three to one to the female, with the great variation in the geographical distribution. More common in the uh, West Asian, and common type is the squamous carcinoma and adenocarcinoma. The underlying etiology and pathogenesis is multifactorial, with the environmental and dietary factors acting synergistic. This is the uh, endoscopic picture for the benign tumor that appear as the swelling in the lower end of esophagus. Mostly are leiomyoma and discovered incidentally. Incidentally, I need to study. We can use the endoscope for other cause and find there's a swelling in the esophagus. And when we're taking a biopsy from this swelling, we discover this is a leiomyoma. The most common benign tumor of esophagus are leiomyoma. The most common malignant tumor of esophagus are squamous cell carcinoma. So leiomyoma is a missing chimal and the squamous cell carcinoma are epithelial origin. This is the gross appearance for the malignant tumor of epithelial origin, whether it's uh, most commonly are squamous cell carcinoma appear as the polyboid growth toward the lumen of the esophagus that result in the narrowing of the lumen. Squamous cell carcinoma represent 85% of, of esophageal, uh, esophageal cancer, 10% of all GIT cancer with high contribution to the mortality. Nisba Ali in mortality for esophageal carcinoma. Patient, most patients are adult after 50, more in the male than female, with higher uh, incidence in the certain uh, countries like Iran and China, and higher incidence in the black than white. This is a, a fungating tumor in the lower end of esophagus that are uh, showing the sequoma uh, uh, cell carcinoma in the lower uh, uh, end of esophagus. The risk factor for esophageal sequoma cell carcinoma are the first are dietary, where the fungal contamination of the fluid associated with the risk for the sequoma carcinoma, high content of nitrate and nitrosamine, deficiency of vitamins A, C, riboflavin, thiamine, deficiency of trace elements like the zinc, and esophageal disease like achalasia, hiatal hernia, reflex esophagitis, structure, plumber Vincent syndrome, all those considered as the risk factor for the Sequoma cell carcinoma. Lifestyle, alcohol and tobacco abuse, all these are associated with the risk for sequoma cell carcinoma. Racial or genetic predisposition, more in the black and those with the celiac disease. Tylosis, all this associated with the sequoma cell carcinoma. Human papilloma virus in the sequoma cell carcinoma, there is a certain question uh, mark regarding this uh, 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 entity. Regarding the pathology, 50% of sequoma cell carcinoma appear in the middle third of esophagus and 30% in the lower and 20% in the upper third of esophagus. Sequoma cell carcinoma anywhere start as in situ, carcinoma in situ, with the thickening of the mucosa. Later on, invasion can be seen and appear, appear grossly as polyboid fungating in the 60% or ulcer in the 25% or diffuse infiltration of the wall in the 15%. This is a gross appearance for the tumor, either fungating toward the lumen 
or ulceration of the wall or diffuse infiltration of the wall with the rubbery uh, uh, result of the wall as a rubbery compound. Regarding the grade of this uh, tumor, mostly are well differentiated to moderately differentiated and the staging uh, classified as the stage 1 when the tumor size is less than 5 cm, stage 2 more than 5 cm with the resectable lymph node and stage 3 more than 10% and extension to the adjacent tissue and is an operable lymph node and the stage 4 when there is perforation and metastasis. The clinical features are gradual and late, including dysphagia, extreme weight loss, aspiration and aspiration pneumonia may result, hemorrhage and sepsis, treatment, surgery and radiotherapy, and regarding the prognosis, 70% die within one year and five uh, uh, year survival about 5 to the 10% only. This is the example for the squamous cell carcinoma with the invasion of the nest of this plastic malignant squamous cell toward the uh, uh, wall or the mural extension. And this is the uh, uh, staging of the tumor when it can appear as the in situ component as we say. Later on T1 when there is uh, involvement of the submucosa, extend to the muscle is uh, T2 and invasion of the muscle toward the adjacent tissue including the pleura and aorta, all this associated with the T4. So this is uh, regarding the T uh, part of the staging system. Regarding the number of the lymph node involvement, maybe N1, N2, N3, N4, and so on, and metastasis may be uh, 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 occur in the uh, liver, lung, elsewhere, and so that this is the picture for the staging of the squamous cell carcinoma. Regarding the adenocarcinoma, as we said, the only precursor for adenocarcinoma are the Bart esophagus that and represent about 10% of esophageal cancer with the rising incidence. Mostly in the middle and lower third of esophagus and may extend to the stomach, the vast majority arise from the Barrett esophagus. The vast majority arise from the Barrett esophagus, as we said. Mostly are adult after 50, 40 years, more uh, uh, in male and rare in the plaques. Most uh, appear as mass or nodular elevation of the mucosa, frequently multicentric. And multicentric, that the current also is multicentric. Elsewhere can be showing inflammation and metabolism, and Barrett will develop. And the tumor that are result from the Barrett also may be multicentric. The histological type, either intestinal, diffuse, signet ring, or, uh, or sometimes even adenosequamous. أحيانا يكون هناك خليط ما بين الأدينوكارسينوما والسكوماس كارسينوما نسميه أدينوسكوماس كارسينوما and is considered as the part of the أدينوكارسينوما Regarding the grade most, uh, most are moderately to the poorly differentiated and the staging similar to that of سكوماس كارسينوما اللي مرينا عليها قبل شوي with the clinical representation are progressive dysphagia with long standing symptom can be associated and this is the gross appearance of the polyboid lesion toward the lumen polyboid uh, uh, إذا نقارن ما بين التيومر that are adenocarcinoma, glandular structure and the lower end of esophagus اللي هي white that are related to the squamous epithelium هنا squamous epithelium and this is the tumor of the glandular origin as an adenocarcinoma of the uh, uh, lower end of esophagus that are arise from the Barrett esophagus and this is an example for the invasive component of adenocarcinoma glandular structure and this is the uh, remnant of the uh, metablastic uh, tissue on the surface that are replacing the previous uh, stratified squamous epithelium and later on dysplasia can be seen and even the carcinoma, adenocarcinoma can be seen like this picture showing the invasive gland, irregular gland, invasive gland that are even reaching to the uh, uh, bundles of muscle so that the invasive adenocarcinoma that are seen in the lower end of esophagus that usually is the only precursor are the BART. Here we will be the pathology of esophagus and in the next lecture will be enter to the pathology of the stomach. Thank you very much.